Amen. Amen. Welcome to our interactive Bible study, July special edition. Invite your friends and family to join us. We have started. Oh yes, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us bow down our head for prayer. Let us bow down our heads for prayer. Begin to thank Lord. Father, I have come before you this evening. Bless me. Bless your words in me. Everything we are going to learn today, Father, direct our noble cause. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Begin to pray wherever you are, begin to pray. Lord, I have come before this throne of grace. We are here to learn the word of the Lord. Let the spirit of heaven descend into our midst. Begin to pray. Let the spirit of the Lord come down. Pray. Let the spirit of the Lord Come down, let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord. Come down, let the Spirit of the Lord come down, let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven above, let the Spirit of the Lord come Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name tonight. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, O Lord, because you are God. Thank you, we Lord. We give you all the praises because there is none like thee, O Lord. Father, we have come before you tonight to dig deep into the scriptures, to learn more about your words, O Lord. We want to follow you more closely. We want to search and know you more and to love you more dearly. Father, descend into our midst in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let the word of wisdom come into us now and fill our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we be going into this word, O oh Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit divine, the great teacher. Come and teach us aright in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of today, may we have full cause to glorify your holy name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, people of God, to this powerful episode of our interactive Bible study. We have a special one for this month of July which we call the prodigal son. Most of you should have seen the flyer. It is going to be a four weeks course, the prodigal son. And uh, from the teaching of Jesus Christ about the prodigal son, we have um, been able to break this big topic down into four different based uh, subtopics. So 
we are bringing four main topics out of this main topic so we will be treating the first one today which we call god's time wait for your time and we'll be taking luke chapter 15 i want you to read luke chapter 15 let us start the reading from verse 11 to 16. We're not going to finish the whole story today, but we're going to read the part of the story that is applicable to God's timing. So and he let said, us open our Bible. Viewers at home, I want you to open your Bible. I want you to participate. And before we read, I would like to let us know that you are free to call in to ask questions. This is an interactive Bible study session. So I don't just want to sit here and teach like a teacher. I'm not a teacher. Jesus himself is the teacher. We are going to share wisdom and understanding together. So you call 202 600 6222. And also, there's a Nigerian number. So for those of you that, in, that are in Nigeria and you are considering the cost of calling um, this uh, American number, there is a Nigerian number that you can call. Please help me pin down the number on Seraph TV and on Prophet Nifemi Akitimei so that people can have access to call that number. If you check on your screen, the numbers are being pinned down right now. So you can call those two numbers if you want to ask questions when the time is due for questioning. The Lord bless you. Now we shall take the text from Luke 15 verse 11 to 16. And he said, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger, younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me, and divide unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and turned himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with us that, that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. So if you look at this topic, the boy left home at a wrong time it wasn't time for him to leave his father when he left and this is why we have tagged today's topic as god's time one of the most vital lessons to be learned from this parable is the concept of time the concept of god's timing the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 3 if you will read for me in ecclesiastes chapter 3 that for everything under heaven, there is time. So everything, there is time. A time. For everything, there is a season. For everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Everything under heaven has a time for it. A time to be born. A time to be born. And a time to die. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to plant. And a time to so pluck out that scripture, which is you plant. understand the Bible is trying to establish the concept of time. That God himself values time and he doesn't joke with time. Everything in life has been planned well by God. And there are time that he has actually put for things to happen. If you look at that boy, he wanted to leave home by, by all means. And what he demanded for was not he was supposed to demand for. Because there is a process and protocol that is supposed to be followed before that thing is demanding for will come to him. There is stage. There is a stage you have to follow. There is a stage your life has to follow. When a child is born, it takes time for that child to grow into maturity. It is not the same day that you are born that you mature. No. Remember, Rome was not built in a day. In the calendar of God, there is something that we call appointed time. In God's calendar, in God's syllabus, appointed time is a vital instrument in the hand of God. 
And sometimes they call it the fullness of time. If you read in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent Jesus. When the fullness of time had not come, God was sending other prophets. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Because it was not the fullness of time, he sent Noah. He sent Moses. He sent um, Isaiah. He sent Elijah. He sent a lot of prophets. But when the fullness of time had come. But when the fullness of time was come. When the fullness. So in God's diary there is something we call fullness of time. The concept of time. God, God values it so much. That is why you see that God created the sun. At the beginning of creation. God knew about time. And he understands time. He respects time. He knows how important time is. That was why he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why were those things created? To give us time. The, the sun will shine. Once the sun is shining, we know we're in the afternoon. By the time the sun sets and the moon is taking over the sky, we know we're getting to the night. And when the stars begin to show forth, we know it's night time. And by the time the moon and the stars leaves the sky and the sun takes over, we know we're already in the day. Uh, somebody asked me, or I asked some of my students one time that, uh, the moon, where does it go during the day? And where does the star go during the day? A lot of them said maybe he went to rest, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you, the sun is too bright. The moon, the star, and the sun, they are all in the sky 247. There is no time they leave. But you know what? The brightness of the sun overshadows the moon and overshadows the sky, the, the, the stars. The star never leaves ever. The moon never leaves the sky. But the brightness of the star of, 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 of the sun overshadows their light until the sun finishes his own job before the moon will start. So God understands the concept of time. That is why you see that when a father dies, they share his will. When a father is still alive, they don't share will. Amen. Amen. Traditionally, a man's will is not shared to the children when he is alive because the will is his inheritance that the children will inherit. They only can share it when he dies so but unfortunately for this little boy he wanted his own will his own inheritance his portion of the father's wealth he wanted it while the father was alive it was a long time that is the first thing i want to establish in that place some people before they die they write their will and what is will I wrote something down here that will is the legal declaration of a person's wishes regarding the disposal of his or her property after his death. So, if you look at the book of uh, Galatians 4 4, it said, When the fullness when of time, time was, come, was come, God sent for his son. God sent his son. Made of a woman. Yes. Made other the Lord. Because that time. Jesus needed to come. It was time for him to come. God did it because God knows the time. Unfortunately, this boy's father was still alive and he wanted to take inheritance. It was the wrong time. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 17. A man's will is more powerful after the death of that man. So, the man's will is more powerful when the man dies. And nobody can take over the will or inheritance while he's still alive. And here is the little boy that wants to take the inheritance of his father while the father is still alive. So the, the prodigal son, number one, he broke protocol of time. What did I say? He has broken the protocol of God's time. time by demanding or by requesting for his portion of the inheritance at a very 
wrong time from his father while the father was still alive. Number two, it was not ripe or matured enough to leave home to be independent. In he, he was not ripe enough to be independent. He is not supposed to live independent at that age with all those riches. There's no way he can manage it. The same way there are some of us that are children of God, there are some things our faith cannot manage now. That is why God is not answering some of our prayers. There are prayers we are praying that God is not answering. It's not that God is wicked, but God knows that we are not ripe enough to manage the success if that prayer is answered. We are not matured enough. We are not old enough to manage that success if God does it at our own time. So God chooses to do it at his own time. So let us study again from that prodigal son. Lack of maturity will always make him to make wrong judgment and wrong decision because he was immature. That was why he decided to take his father's inheritance while the father was still alive. It was a wrong judgment. It was a wrong decision. A lot of us, we fall into this kind of situation because we do things at the wrong time. We must always learn to understand God's timing. God has a time to prosper you. God has a time that he wants you to excel in life. Do not be too forward. Don't run more than what God has predestined for you. A lot of people have done it and they have made themselves where they never expected. The prodigal son messed up. He lavished all his father's wealth abroad because he was not ripe enough to be independent. Then, number two, it wasn't time for him to stay alone. It wasn't the right time for him to take over those possessions. So, there are some people there are even pastors that are not ripe enough to pastor a church. But they just feel, I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have this, so I can do it. Some people are not ripe enough. They are not ripe enough to be independently on their own. Some people are still supposed to be serving under a master. There are some pastors that are still supposed to be in training by the virtue of their biblical knowledge. They are supposed to be subjected to training under a master. But today they are Jews. <laughs> there are some of them that are not even ripe for ordination. But today they are prophets moving around with staffs. And that is why you see that a lot of people misbehave in the Christian faith. A lot of people do the wrong thing in the Christian faith. Why? Because they are not ripe enough to do what they are doing. They are like the prodigal son. They will waste virtues. They will waste the anointing. They will waste God's riches and wealth that is supposed to deposit in them. You need to grow to maturity to be manifested. Jesus was not manifested until he was 30. Why? Because it was the Jewish tradition that you have to be 30 before you are being showcased. If you are not 30, nobody wants to know you. Nobody wants to see you. That is the Jewish tradition. So, why do you think Jesus did not start his ministry until he was 30? Because nobody will see him. Nobody will reckon with him. It was the Jewish tradition from age 30 upward. That is where you can come out here or come in here. So if you do any occurring at under 30, nobody cares to see you. Hmm. There is an appointed time for everything in life. There is, okay, let me tell you, if your father is a millionaire, and your father has Bentley, your father has Rolls Royce in his company, and you are just 12 years old, and you tell your father, daddy, give me the car key, I want to go to Walmart, do you think your father will give you? Even if all those things belong to you, your father will not give you one because you are not matured enough. Number two, it is not yet time for you to start driving such a luxury car. You need to grow to maturity. You need to 
wait for that appointed time. If you do it at the wrong time, is either you have an accident or something else will happen to you. Mm. So there is always an appointed time. But unfortunately, most Christians, we do not want to wait for that appointed time. We are always in a hurry to make it because others are making it. We are always in a hurry. We want to be successful at all costs because others are successful. We have forgotten that the timing of God differs per individual. The time that I will make it is different from the time you will make it. God created Sarah. The same God that created Sarah is the same God that created Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary never begged for a child. Virgin Mary never knew any man. Yet God told him you will conceive and be a child. Here is Sarah begging God every day and until she was 90, she had no son. Because the timing of childbearing on Sarah is different from the timing of childbearing for Virgin Mary. This is the problem of a lot of us. We tend, we want to be this, we want to be that. When you fail to wait for God's time, you will always run at a loss. You will always make mistakes. If in God's syllabus, there is something called waiting time. Sometimes God will want you to undergo some hard time and see how far you can endure before he will now test you with his power, with his riches, with his wealth, and with his mightiness. God will not use you without making you undergo some kind of training. All those times you are going through those storms is called your waiting time. Have you imagined that the waiting time or the gestation period of an elephant is always different from that of a dog. Why? Because a dog, a dog can give birth in three more, two times in a year. The dog will give birth two times in a year. Meanwhile, the gestation period of a single elephant is a long time. But when the elephant gives birth, the child, a week old, is even bigger than the dog. There is time for everything. Let us look at the Bible in the book of Numbers chapter 14 and 39. Numbers 14, 39. Let us see what the Israelites did here. Unfortunately for the Israelites, they went to war at a very wrong time. They went to battle at a very wrong time. They went into war with the Amalekites and the Canaanites at a wrong time. God has time for everything. But unfortunately, at this point in time, the Israelites could not study God's timing. They went to war. Verse 29. Yes, Exodus 14, 29. Uh, Exodus. And Moses told these things unto the children of Israel. And the people murmured greatly. And the rose early in the morning and got them up into the mountains, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place where the Lord had promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandments of the Lord, but it shall not prosper? Go not up, for the Lord is not among you. Now, this is the mentor. This is the leader. This is the shepherd, Moses. He told them, this is not the right time for you to go into this battle. The Lord is not with you. The Lord is not going with you. They were unable to read God's timing as at the time Moses was speaking to them. Now, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, but ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you, but they presume to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwell in the hill, and smote them, and discomfited them 
even unto Bora. So they were unable to study God's time here and they lost their battle. You must understand the concept of God's time. When you fail that time, it's always a big problem. If you read the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, there is this story of Naaman. Naaman came to the prophet Elisha for healing. And after he was healed, he brought goods. He brought a lot of things for the prophet, saying, uh, Prophet, please take this from me. Read from verse 24. 2 Kings 5. And when it came to the tower, it took them from their hand. Now, now let me, let me, you're going to read from there. When Naaman brought all those things, the prophet rejected it. He said, no, I can't take that from you. Then he said, please, I just want to bless the work of God. I said, this is not the time to receive offering. The prophet told his servant, it is not the time to receive gift." But the, 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 the servant was not contented. He wanted something. He wanted something by all means. And he went behind the prophet. He went to Naaman to collect change of clothes and other gifts and blah, blah, blah. He brought them and put them in the stores. Verse 24. And when he came to the tower, when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand. Yes. And bestowed them in the in the house. Uh huh. And let the men go, mm -hmm. and he departed. Yes. But he went in. He went and in. stood before his master. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said unto him. Elisha said unto him. Where comest thou? Where are you coming from? The house. And he said, The servants went no with them. He said, I didn't go anywhere. And he said unto him. He said unto him. Was not my heart with thee? Did my mind not, did my heart not go with you? When the man turned against, again from his chariot to meet thee. Yes. Is it a time to receive money? Is this a time to receive money? And to receive garments. Or to receive garments? And olive yards. Yes. And vine yards. Yes. And sheep. Yes. And oxen. Yes. And maid servants. Yes. And maid servants. Now, the prophet, is this a time? To receive, can you take that place again? And he said unto them, Why not my heart with thee? Why did my turn again from his chariot to meet thee? Yes. Is it a time to receive money? Is this a time to receive money? Underline that place in your Bible. There is time for everything. This was the beginning of the destruction of the servant of that prophet. He has. This was the beginning of his downfall because he did not understand the concept of time. When you fail to understand the concept of God's timing, you will misbehave. And there is always a terrible punishment that comes after it. Is this the time? Yes. Is it the time to receive money? Uh -huh. And to receive, receive garments? Yes. And olive yards? Yes. And vineyards? Yes. And sheep? Mm -hmm. And oxen? Mm -hmm. And men servants? And maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, mm -hmm. and unto thy seed forever. And the went out from now, his presence there, a leper there, there as white came as a curse that was laid upon him, that the leprosy of Naaman will come upon him, yeah. and he seeds, he seeds, uh -huh. forever, for right. ever. So there was a curse that affected his generation. Why? He was unable to understand the concept of God's timing. When you fail to understand the concept of God's timing, you will suffer. So, from what we have extracted from this parable of the prodigal son, after this program, I want you to pray so that you don't you don't you don't misbehave, you don't miss this God's timing. God does not joke with His time. When God speaks about time, He is always specific. If you observe when God makes promises, there are times that are attached to the promises. When he told Abraham, by this time next year, most of God's promises, they carry time. He told him, by this time next year, Sarah, your wife, will carry a boy. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife, by this so-so time, this will happen. By so-so time, they always give time. So, 
God always gives time to everything. So you must learn to understand this concept of God's timing. And I don't know where they came about this wise saying. I don't think it's in the Bible. God's time is the best. I don't know who came about that sentence. God's time is the best. And I'm 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 keen into it that God's time is the best. To us human, we might think it's late. As much as you think it's late, it's still the best. Somebody gave me somebody somebody had an encounter with me when we discussed something. In our discussion, he said, uh, God. I don't want to spend extra days on that. But it's time for me to die. Let me just die. And I was like, what, what do you mean? Then we, when we started talking and we analyzed um, John the Baptist. And we said, John the Baptist would have been more honorable if after the baptism of Jesus Christ, he died the following day. He would have just <laughs> completed his work. That was the end of his mission on earth. After the baptism of Christ, Christ. he will be well celebrated. But when that time passed, some things that he was not supposed to talk to, he, he put his mouth there. When uh, they took the wife of Herodias, he was going to Herod. Uh, why did you do this? Until Kolopadadasi. Mm. Because all the extra time like one part of the So we were laughing in that discussion. And believe you me, there's something vital in that point I just made. The extra time he spent landed him into prison. And while in prison, he was expecting Jesus to come and set him free. And Jesus did not come. Because to Jesus, he has completed his work. Babalene of Blessed Memory, the founder of Zion, he prayed one prayer one day. He said, Oluwa, I'm not just about to you, you're afraid you're about to run away by me. I was so scared of that prayer. That once that his work merits heaven, that should kill him. He doesn't want to spend an extra day that will corrupt whatever he has done on that. And there was this old song in Obola that they used to sing. Uh, be back, but me back, pay Lord Dore Oluwa. Te wa ya si me ki ma bo. Aye o aye bulu. Aye le back back when you jen. They can corrupt your faith. So when my work is finished, let me come home. Why do you think the Lord said it is finished? He knew his work was completed. When Jesus said it is finished, if he has spent one more day, who knows what could have happened? Who knows? So God has time for everything. So the extra time that John the Baptist used landed him in prison. And he sent people to Jesus. Because at that point, while he was in that pain in prison, he started doubting Jesus Christ. And he sent a message, are you he that is to come? Or we should expect another. It was him that baptized Jesus. It was in his presence that the dove descended upon Jesus and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. After saying all that, then he sent a message to Jesus. Are you he that is to come? Or we should wait for another. Why? Because he was actually expecting Jesus to come and set him free. And Jesus did not come there. So it was in doubt. So sometimes when you expect some things to happen in your own way, in your own time, and you don't see them, you blaspheme God. And when you blaspheme God, the more problem you encounter. The moment Jesus said that, he said, go back and tell him, the blinds are receiving their sight. The lame are walking. And the following day, he was beheaded. He was what? He was beheaded the following day. So, one thing I want you to know. Put that off. One thing I want you to know is this. There is time for everything. 
Whatever you are doing, respect God's time, wait for God's time. Don't be in too much hurry to achieve some things in life. Don't be in too much haste to achieve some things in life. I will open the floor now before I make this point. You can call in to ask questions. It is time for question and answer. If you want to ask questions, you can ask. We are speaking on God's timing. So I want you to check the platform. Do we have any, any questions so far? Um, well, I have two questions. Um, well, let me check the platform quickly to see if anybody sent us a question. God's time is the best. When God gives you a message, there is always a time that accompanies it. He will tell you, by the prophets are used to that way of the Lord. By this time tomorrow, there will be this, there will be that. By this time next year, this and this will happen. So God understands the concept of time. So if you as a human being, if you don't understand the concept of time, you will always do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And when you do the wrong thing at the wrong time, well, I buy a man. Is that how people who molest you or they mess you up? Because you are in the wrong place, you are doing the right thing at the wrong time. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, we are on an uh, interactive Bible session with Prophet Nifemi. Thank you. Um, this is it. Sometimes the only thing you can do is just to pray. You see, Jesus says something in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. With it. Thy kingdom come. Because he knew that until that kingdom comes, the world will never be at rest. The only time there will be peace in the world is when the kingdom comes. So, if, if somebody is calling again, um, I'll, I'll pick up your call. Let me finish this question. So, thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth. So, there is no way his will will be done on earth if his kingdom does not come. That is the problem we are having now. The only thing you can do about God's timing is to pray. And even when you pray, sometimes prayer will force God to do something that is not supposed to do at the, at the time he's doing it. It will become a problem at the end of the day. So sometimes it's better to wait. When you force God in prayer, how do I say, how do I say, how do I say, he will do something for you by one man quickly on the you cara. He will just do a jack by map by media. He will just do okay take now. And that thing will end up becoming a problem for you. But you prayed for it. I will give you this before you go. Isaiah 38. If you look at the story in Isaiah 38, let me please write this question down. Let me answer this question. I will continue with you. Hold on. Don't go. Hold on. Hello? 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 Yeah, good afternoon. You are in a live show, interactive Bible study with Prophet Nifemi. Yes, sir. So I have a question. Yes. And the question is, like, God on this one, he's on any time, like, your opinion. Why did, the father knew that he gave the son, that the son of grace, he would abuse it. Why did he still give him that grace? Thank you. The same question you are asking is the same question I am trying to
to answer. Let me match these two calls together so that two of you will listen to me. The first person asks that, what can we do to esteem God to do what we are praying for because God's time is too long. And the second caller is saying, God knew that the prodigal son will abuse that grace. Why did he still do it? Now, when you are too persistent and you, you're, you're praying for something, you're praying for it, God do it now. God do it now. God do it now. When that prayer begins to hit God all every day, every day, every day, sometimes God for so it's okay, let me just answer this person and he will answer you. Even though he knows it is not your time, but because you are disturbing him too much with your prayers, he will answer you. And that thing might end up becoming a problem for you. So sometimes people are praying for something and God doesn't keep us. Just let it be. Just let it be. God's time is the best. Now let me share with both of you. I have something very, very, very vital here in Isaiah chapter 38. From verse 1, the word of the Lord came upon prophet Isaiah. In those days. Yes. Ezekiah, sick Ezekiah the king was sick to death. And, the prophet, the son of and God sent Isaiah the prophet. Came unto him. Yes. And said unto him. Go. Thus yes. said the Lord. Thou says the Lord. Set thy house in order. Set thy house in order. For thou shalt the meaning die of that me. word is train your children. Build your next of kin. Who will become king after you? Thou, Put them in position now because for thou, thou shalt die, shall die, die and, not live. and you will not leave. If only Ezekiah has obeyed that word, okay. his kingdom wouldn't have been torn apart. Okay. I am going somewhere today. Okay. I am teaching something strange. Okay. Now, Ezekiah knelt down mm -hmm. against the prophecy of God. Right. And he was praying for long life. And God in heaven has sealed mm -hmm. his work. Because God knows that where Ezekiah got to, everything he has done will merit heaven. Okay. It was ready to take him. But here is Ezekiah praying for long life. Right. And while praying for long life, God decided to answer his prayer. He added 15 years to his year. Right. But unfortunately, 15 years he had go by to Ezekiah. 15 years to be yellow by year. That is why I'm saying I am going to somewhere deep today. Now, the last 15 years of King Ezekiah, who amongst you has ever found out how he spent that last 15 years? He never spent it to please God. He spent that 15 years in pride and that 15 years later destroyed everything he has ever worked for. Let us let us see what the Bible has to say. Um, I will bring out four points. Then we open Second Chronicles chapter thirty-two, verse twenty-five. Second Chronicles thirty-two. Second Chronicles thirty-two. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter thirty-two. That's what. Verse 25. Second Chronicles, wait, wait, wait. Chronicles 32. Are we all there? Let us read verse 25. But Ezekiah rendered not again. But Ezekiah rendered not again. According to the benefits done unto him. Did you hear that, sir? He rendered not again according to the benefit of that 15 years that was given to him. For his ass was lifted up. His what? His heart. Therefore, he he better was got off in low 15 years. If you read that Isaiah 38 in verse 2 and 3, he said a prayer 
that prayer was what actually then Ezekiel turned his face it, toward it, the world. He turned his face to the world. He said, and prayed unto the Lord. Yes, and said, he said, remember, remember now, remember o now, O Lord, I beseech, thee, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a with a perfect heart. heart. But and the I last fifteen years, he never walked with God with a perfect heart. Read. With a perfect, and have done that which is. Good I have in done that which is good in the sight. And his guy so, so all that was what pleased God. That God decided. But Obeta came when he grew. Like any akokoi, he said, "My bad, you know." But here he is, God. I don't want mm. to die. I don't want to die, God. Ah, he caught us in me. He caught us. Okay, now. If I told him about long life. There's this proverb, I was sharing this with my wife one, some three days ago. I said, this Yoruba adage, that I wonder where it came from. I said, that thing is stupid. <laughs> so, I was, I was discussing that program with my wife that, have you ever imagined this program where ah, you are praying, Oluwa Jekki Pela Ye, O Mada Jekko Jumi Ribi, you can no man choose you. Is that a Koma Pela Ye, Kondjo Ema Ribi, or Ko Pela Ye, Tori Kosibo Efe Pela Ye, Tondjo Ode Ribi. Loro Kon Jesu Ojuwa Ode Ribi. Ah, Mi Jesu. So, that verse 25, read it in Second Chronicles. Now, Etiria Droa Tiesikaya Kokogba, he was walking upright with God, but now, after Ezekiah he was granted not, another 15 years. But yes. Ezekiah read that not again. So, Ezekiah could see two pada, so that there be ore at Tia Shefu, Nitori or Correct Bega, Nitori no Nibi, Nushewa, Sori Re, Lori Judah, and Lori Jerusalem. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The the, 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 the the gift of extra 15 years that was given to him, he did not use that 15 years in appreciating God. He did not use that 15 years to serve God the way he used to serve him before. He used it in pride. Okay. Let us read. Continue. Verse 26. Verse 26. Now, notwithstanding, Ezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came up, not upon them so, in the days of Ezekiah. Notwithstanding, he humbled himself for the pride of his heart. So instead of humbling himself for God, he humbled himself for, for the pride, pride of his heart. Now, you see now. So, Tobati Kumba Shekopi. Sometimes, when you pray and prayers are not answered, don't kill yourself. God knows best. He did not answer that prayer because he doesn't want you to go to hell. He did not answer that prayer because he doesn't want you to misbehave. Let me ask you this. If Solomon was not that rich, he would not marry Dutch many wives. True. If Solomon did not have that kind of money, he would not have that kind of concubine that he had. True. Sometimes when you are praying to be blessed, you are praying for riches, you are praying for wealth. God knows your capability. He knows what you can manage. The same way the prodigal son requested for inheritance. Even though the father knew that this boy is not ripe enough to manage this thing, but he will not let the father rest. At, at the point when he frustrated the father, the father said, okay, bah, oh, go ahead, bah, my Lord. Peace of mind. Let me have peace of mind. That is how God does to some of us when we pray, 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 we die in the okay, we die in the sorrow. Some people, want want so much people, but if you see them, they will pray, 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 and God will get frustrated. Okay, all right, bah. At the end of the day, you are not even supposed to have that car now. Because God knows that if you have that card now, in two years you might die in an accident. He has not given you that car for a purpose. But here are you dying on the mountain for a car. Mm. Because 
you do not know his appointed time and he said my thought is different from your thought my timing is different from your timing hallelujah hallelujah so it's better you wait for your time now read this again where are you first uh-huh Ezekiel humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Ezekiel. Continue. And the second, Ezekiel had exceeding much riches and he honor. He had exceeding much riches and honor. Uh -huh. And he made himself treasure, treasuries for silver. He made himself treasuries for silver and, and for, for gold, gold and for and precious, for precious stones. stones and for, and for spices, spices and for, for shields and for all manner, for all manner of present jewels. Uh -huh. Stars also for the increase of corn uh -huh. and wine uh -huh. and oil. Continue. And stores for all manner of beasts uh -huh. and goods for flocks. Continue. Remember, he provided, he provided him cities mm -hmm. and possessions of flocks and earth yes. in abundance. Mm -hmm. But God had given given him substance very much. Yes. This same Ezekiel also stopped the upper water course of Gihon and brought and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of the city of David. And Ezekiel prospered in all his works. Uh -huh. How the in the business of the ambassadors of, of the princes of, princes of Babylon, Babylon uh -huh. who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land God left him. God what? Left him. Underline that place. That is verse 31. That's one, yes. God Underline left him. that place. To try God him. left him to try him. To try him. That he might that know he might all, know that, was all that was in his heart. God knew his heart before. His heart was with the Lord before. But the extra 15 years of Kosjuga, all he concentrated on was the riches. Yes. He never glorified God. God left him. Continue. God left us. So now the rest now, 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 let, let, let me let me take you to Second King twenty. Second King twenty verse fourteen. Second King twenty verse fourteen. Fourteen to eighty. Second Kings chapter twenty. Second Kings twenty. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto the king Ezekiah. Yes. And said unto him, mm. What said this man? And from whence came they unto thee? Now he brought people to the kingdom, and the, the the word of the Lord came to the prophet, Go and meet this king. Yes. Who are these people? Uh -huh. What said and from whence they came unto? Where the did they come from? And this guy said. He said. They have come from a far country. They have come from a far country Even of from Babylon. Babylon. Uh -huh. And he said, he said, What have they seen in thine house? What did you show them in your house? And Zikai answered, All the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasure, treasures that I have not shown no, them. Don't show them. Uh -huh. And as I said unto Zikai, Hear, Hear the, word the word of the Lord. Lord. Behold, Behold, the, the days come, come that all, the, all that is in thy house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, said the Lord. Now, you see, everything he has labored for, Furara, I have gold, I have this, I have that. Then God said to him, because you have invited your enemies to come and see your treasures, everything in your house will be stolen and taken away from you. And of thy sons that, sh sons that shall issue from thee, uh -huh. which thou shalt be get, shall they take away mm -hmm. and they shall be in in the palace of the king lo of and behold it was babylon that conquered that city and they took all the sons they turned them to you know you know what an eunuch is they castrated them <laughs> what someone they were they castrated all of them so the extra 15 years he spent was a loss then I remember that by my prayer. Uluwa, Timba Tiluri of a new dress, by my couple, my gentle for jury, oh, she lay. Be bad, but me back, pay Lord Dore Uluwa. The wire see me, came my ball. So God has time for everything. Sometimes we worry too much. When you are delayed, God has a purpose for that delay. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. 
You have been expecting something for years and you feel God is not answering you. God is there. He knows you are in expectation. He's not doing that thing because he wants you to be alive. If he has done that thing, perhaps maybe you would have died. Maybe something terrible would have happened to you. So wait for God's time. Did I answer your question, man? Yes, sir. God bless both of you. Yes, sir. Any other question? No, sir. Thank you. So, my people, my people, my people, God's time the is the best. Sometimes when we don't achieve the things we want to achieve on time, we blaspheme God. Ah, she bolo, she bolo, she buy, she bolo, so quick, you need to come. Ah, ah, look. God's time is the best. Sometimes he will do some things. Hello, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're on a live show with Prophet Nifemi on Interactive Bible Study. Yeah, this is Prophet Alfred. God bless you, sir. Yeah, I just uh, came in now. And uh, what I heard the man of God talking about is a topical issue which I felt I have a few questions to ask. Okay. Especially when it has to do with uh, King Ezekiah. Yes. There's this prayer people pray nowadays. And uh, it has become the order of the day. Especially when anyone is found in sickness, even the, the men of God, when they pray for, for them, mm -hmm. including myself, it's always been a point of reference. Yes. That God, as Ezekiah cried unto you, the same prophet Isaiah that was sent to him, that is your part, it is your part every day that that sickness he would die, will not, will not survive it. That same uh, Isaiah was sent back to him that, oh God has added another 15 years. Should we say that people praying that prayer are not knowledgeable enough of what the scripture says that they are asking for another longevity to whoever that is sick? Or should we, because of what has happened to Ezekiah, the remaining 15 years was just like Ola Balu and the lost. Does that mean that we should not pray for longevity for anybody who is sick? Thank or you. We should not be making that reference. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Amen. I, Prophet Nifemi, I have also prayed that prayer and I have also referenced that prayer. Now, two things. Someone might be sick to death. It might not be God's time for that person to die. Praying the prayer of Ezekiah is not a wrong prayer for such a situation. Sometimes it could be natural sickness that wants to take over. Sometimes it could be the hand of the devil upon one's glory that wants to take over and bring untimely death. One can rebook such quoting references. There's nothing bad in that. But the case of Ezekiah, a message was sent by God in heaven by himself. So if it was just a mere sickness that was not having anything to do with God, then we'll be saying something different. But God saw that this man has completed his work. He needs to come now. If not, something else will happen. They may not write that in the Bible. They may not, uh, Isaiah may not even say that. Sometimes when prophecy comes out that this, this will happen, you may not know the reason, but God knows best. So people praying that prayer using Ezekiah as a point of reference is not a bad thing when they are afflicted by natural causes of death or by human um, wickedness. Let me put it that way. You know, sometimes it could be witchcraft, it could be demons, it could be any challenge. So, when they pray that prayer, there's nothing wrong. The issue with Ezekiah was that it was God himself that wanted him home 
but he prayed against God's will and God left him to do his will and of which his will misled him at the end of the day against God. So that is what I can say. Thank you very much, sir. God bless. That was uh, absolutely answered and accurate. Another question more like it. Does it mean that if anyone is sick to the point of death, because nobody knows the mind of God, are we saying that we should not pray that God let me survive this sickness? If at that point in time, if he dies, just like what happened to Ezekiah, if he had died the time God wanted him home, then he prayed for the grace. Do we now say that anytime anyone is at point of death, we should rather ask God that let your will be done. We should not pray for any healings or that, what that, have you. Thank you, sir. Um, my answer to that question is this. The first thing a prophet you find out is what is the cause of this sickness? Is this from God or is from human? That should be the very first question. Once the source is specified spiritually, they will know the next step. I remember while I was in the university, the vice counselor then sent for me. I did not meet him one on one. The vice chancellor there was Professor Akiri. No, I didn't want to mention him then, but I'm sorry. He sent a message. I think they had this discussion because I, I was pastoring a church there in the university and my church was in town. So they were just discussing that they needed a prophet. So they sent for the uh, Joint Christian Post Fellowship President to gather pastors that they needed to pray. So they were praying. And one of the lecturers suggested that there is one boy in town that has a church or that that guy used to see vision or that they should go and call him. So I was about sitting for a chemistry test when they came to call me from the Dean of Science, uh, Dean of Student Affairs office. I went there. When I got to the Dean of Student Affairs office, they are you so so person? I said yes. He said, follow me. I was so scared. Because I didn't, when, when they call you in that office, is that they have reported you? So I didn't know what was happening. He said, follow me. And straight we were going to the vice counselor's office. Now, we all went to the vice What will take you to the vice counselor's office if you have not committed a crime? Because you have no business there. The vice counselor of the university is not somebody you even see all, all the time. You may not even see more than two, three times in a year. So we got to the business office. He said, sit down. And I went inside. When he was sitting down with two of his colleagues and he said, are you so, so person? I said, yes. He said, we want you to pray. I heard about you. I want you to pray for me. Then my mind now came down. <laughs> I sat down and I started praying. While I was praying, I saw a hut, a bamboo house, very old and wretched. Suddenly, I saw that bamboo house burning, and the smoke was going to the sky. The smoke was going straight to the sky and never came back. And I saw a rope from that hut tied to the vice chancellor's waist. Then I was asking, God, what is the meaning of this sign? The Lord told me that this bamboo house is representing somebody that is old in the family of the vice chancellor that the rope means family, that that person is tied around his waist, that they are related. And I told him that, Daddy, I saw a heart representing a whole person. And I saw that old heart in flames. And I saw smokes going up into the sky. I never come back. God told me the spirit of that person is going up and is not coming back. I said, you are going to lose somebody in your family. The person is old already. That person will die. And they looked at themselves, not knowing that the mother of the vice counselor was sick as at that time. They looked at themselves and they said, Wally, that we want you to pray that so-so person is sick. And when I prayed, 
I received the message that this person has already gone to heaven. Oh my people, see, he could see anything. And I told them, he told me to pray. I said, I cannot pray that this person is going already. God revealed to me, it is not the witches that want to kill her now. It is not just secrets that want to kill her. It was God's time that she comes back home. And I told him, sir, there is nothing I can do, your mother will die. <laughs> you know, you know the kind that there are some messages that you cannot sweet talk. I said, there's nothing I can do. He said, put my mother in prayer. I said, yes, I did not pray one simple prayer. The following week, the mother died. And they sent people to come and come with her. <laughs> now, the funny thing was, when they were going for the burial, this man sent for me. I was in the vice chancellor's car. And all the other students were looking at me. Ah, kidding me for a or the VC. Ah, boy, man, till less ago, I became a celebrity because of that message. So sometimes I digressed because I was able to know that that woman's sojourn on earth had come to a close. So when somebody is sick, and the person is at the point of death. Find out, is this death from God or is from human? If it's from human, then you combat it. If it's from God, all you need to say is, Lord, let thy will be, be done. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, let, let, let thy will be done. That is all I can say. Because sometimes... When it is God's timing for that person to go, and you made them wait for some days, when the father she said, mm. that was why I was making reference to John the Baptist. Now, I was in an argument. Are you with me, Doctor of Alfred? I was saying, how honorable would it have been if, after John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ, if he had died the following day? It would have been a very completed work. Koneri the kuri de bitu fe soro siero don fe la mo e wo. Koneri lo she wo. But he spent extra time, and out of the extra time, he saw because he was a prophet, not meant to be in the town. Oh, anything kibeni. Iju. He's a voice from the wilderness. He's supposed to be in the wilderness. If he was in the wilderness, he would not come and see what is happening in the palace. But he came down. Herod, you took this person's wife. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Then they say, you go to the prison. While he was in prison, he doubted Jesus Christ. Because he sent people to him. He was expecting Jesus to come and save him from prison. And Jesus did not go. He said, are you he that is to come? Or we should expect another. That question was, yes sir. yes sir, yes sir. I don't want that to open God's wrath visited him. 
God left it. If I have two houses, I want to flout my rich, my riches. I want people to know that yes, I have arrived. I get a new car. I want people to know I have arrived. And in this guise of oh, I'm giving thanks to God. I'm giving testimony in the church. Now, if Ezekiah had done what he did, I want to take it that he was testifying. That God has done this for me, God has done this for me. Are we saying that testimony in the house of God or anywhere to glorify what God has done in our life should not be entertained? And if yes or no, now many people that are not flouting what God has blessed them with, oh, we need such shortest time. Look at what God has blessed me with. It means that I am a man of God. Now, like the program I was in Nigeria, during this pandemic, a man of God was flaunting and saying to the world that, I see this COVID should not even go. It was during this COVID, God blessed me, I had another private jet. I saw that a man of God, a leader of a church, was flaunting all his wealth in the, in the back end of the church, when people that hardly meet up with three square meal a day in his church are still struggling. Now, are we saying, what can you reduce out of this compared to what the entire making gives? Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The difference is very, very clear and simple. Ezekiah's case was not that he was giving a testimony. There's a difference between giving a testimony and flaunting in pride what God has done for you. There are two different things. In the case of Ezekiah, he wasn't glorifying God anymore. Can you read 2 Chronicles 32.25? 2 Chronicles 32, verse 25. 32, 25. Um, 32, verse 25. But is then really not again, according to the perfect benefits done unto him? He rendered not again, according, according to, to the benefit, benefit done, done unto him. him. For his heart was lifted up. So, that is clear. He wasn't giving testimony. He wasn't praising God for what God has done for him. His heart was lifted up. What he was doing there was a replica of what Nebuchadnezzar was doing in the kingdom while he was working with uh, Babylon and Lali, this, that, that, that. The same thing Nebuchadnezzar did was the same thing he was doing. He was flaunting those riches, not glorifying God, but showing them, showcasing them. Just like that person you said was uh, boasting that he bought a jet in pandemic, right? Yes, sir. He wasn't glorifying God. He was oppressing people. Hoping you are wearing your lojuni. So there's a difference between, there's nothing wrong in giving testimony. Giving testimony is it's showing the power of the Lord, encouraging the faith of others so they can believe in faith. But fronting riches is not glorifying God. Rather, it's making others to think that, oh, say, Ojo with Tawana Omar Dabai. So when you do that, you are going against God. So that was what Ezekiah did. If you read that verse 25 to 27, you will get it clear. But Ezekiah read it not again. Uh -huh. According to the benefit done up to him, mm. for his heart was lifted up. Yes. Therefore there was wrath upon him yes. and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Not withstanding. Yes. Ezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. He humbled himself for the pride of his heart. Not that he humbled himself for God. He did not humble himself for God, but he humbled himself for the pride of his heart. So that is it, sir. The Lord bless you. Hello? I think he left right. Okay, thank you. So that is uh, what we can, we can deduce from the extra 15 years spent by 
Hezekiah. And I'll, I'll put this down. He was able to set up Judah as a prime target for the Babylonian invasion. Owara Elofi Faugun wo ilue. Nino 15 years, no last year. He gave birth to the Israel's most evil king, Manasseh. And it was that same Manasseh that would execute Isaiah the prophet. Number three, he cleared the way for Judah to plunge into idolatry and sexual immorality. Within that 15 years, he said to Sheba, you know, no fire. Ultimately, he forfeited their right to the land God had given to them because the Babylonians took away their land last 15 years. If you don't yield to me. So when you don't wait, in conclusion, when you don't wait for God's time, you want to do things on your own time. And if you don't forfeit or arrange, or, 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 or if you don't forfeit God's arrangement because whatever God says he will do, he will do, you might build something that will war against what God will eventually do. God will do what he says he will do at the appointed time. But if you, if you fail to wait for that appointed time and you do your own, that your own that you end up doing will war against what God will end up doing. The case of Abraham, Sarah, Ishmael, and Isaac. Abraham and his wife waited so much for Isaac to come. And when Sarah was tired of waiting, he called Abraham, please, try Edgar. Abraham tried Hagar and they regard Ishmael. They got tired of waiting for God and they, they, they brought Ishmael. And Ishmael brought problem. Ishmael brought al Qaeda. Ishmael brought Boko Haram. Ishmael brought ISIS. Now, what Ishmael brought is winning war against the generation of Isaac. What God promised he would do at the appointed time. So if you wait for God's appointed time, what he says he will do, he will do. But if you cannot wait, oh, dog bossy, oh, oh, bad dog bossy, you will end up waiting war against what God will eventually do. So be careful, be guided. Let us, any other question before we run it up? I want to pray. Amen. Amen. Bow down your heads in prayer. Let us begin to tell God, Lord, I have been taught your words tonight. You have made me understand areas where I have been making mistakes. Lord, I need your visitation. Come into my life. Begin to pray. The power to understand the concept of your timing bestows upon me, O oh Lord. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. The prodigal son didn't understand. He went out at the wrong time and he lavished all his father's inheritance. Lord, I must have been wrong one way or the other. I must have lavished your grace upon me one way or the other. I have misbehaved using your gift one way or the other. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Embrace me back. Put me back. Give me double of what I have lost, O oh Lord. Begin to pray. Bring your prayers to an end. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We <coughs> thank you, Lord. Holy name. We thank you for all we have learned tonight. Thank you, Lord. We are exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, I commit your children that have listened to your words diligently. Father, we pray that the ability to wait for God's appointed time will come upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. For everyone under the sound of my voice that has been in waiting for one thing or the other, Father, we say you will hastily answer them and it will not 
become a problem in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your answer our prayers. Thank you, Lord. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you for being with us. It's been such a wonderful interactive session. Uh, we'll see you again next week by God's grace. And until then, stay blessed. I remain the humble servant of the Lord, Prophet Nifemi.